Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a hemostat mandala and gravity ice dye combination shirt. I'm going to put the mandala only on the front side of the shirt, so I need to find the middle of the front of the shirt. To do that, I'm going to fold the shirt in half up at the top and make a mark with a washable marker in the middle of the shirt. I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom. Now I want to isolate the front of the shirt and to do that I'm going to grab the two marks that I made, lift the shirt up off of the table and give it a little shake. When I lay the shirt back down it's folded the front of the shirt in half and the back part of the shirt is what you see back behind the sleeves of the shirt. I'm placing a mark where I'd like to begin the center of the mandala and I personally like to put that a little bit above where the actual center of the shirt is. Usually I put it just a little bit below the armpits of the shirt. To fold the mandala, I'm going to start by folding the bottom hem up to that line and the top of the shirt down to that line. Then to make folding the shirt in half a little easier, I'm going to stick a ruler underneath that center fold or seam, lift the shirt up off the table and fold it in half. I'm going to fold each side of the shirt down one more time. At this point, the shirt is folded in an eight point mandala. Since I'm going to use hemostats on the shirt, I'm going to leave it at an eight point mandala. If you wanted to do one more fold on each side, you could to make it a 16 point mandala, but it's really tough to use hemostats on a 16 point mandala because the fabric is just too thick. For this shirt, I'm going to use curved hemostats, and the majority of my hemostats are 10 and 12 inch hemostats. I've also coated my hemostats in heat shrink tubing. I went to either Lowe's or Home Depot, you can purchase it at both places, and bought some heat shrink tubing in the electrical department. Then I used my heat gun to shrink it down to fit over the top of the hemostat teeth. This is going to help keep the teeth from damaging the fabric. I'm applying the hemostats with the curved side facing down, and I'm placing them at an angle. The placement of the hemostats is totally up to you. You can put them on the shirt however you want to. Before I began applying the hemostats, I used my washable marker and made a mark up near the top of the shirt where the neck of the shirt is. I don't want to apply my hemostats beyond that area. So for this shirt, I'm going to use some blue and some purple colors. The setup that I'm using is I have a metal shelving unit and I've placed the mandala portion on the very top shelf of the shelving unit. Then I've left the rest of the shirt hanging over the edge of the shelving unit. On the second shelf, I've placed one of the plastic dish pans that I purchased at the Dollar Tree dollar store to catch any of the excess dye or liquid that's going to come out of the shirt. I'm also making myself an ice barrier around the shirt out of some silicone cake molds and wooden clothespins. I'm going to start by applying some Imperial Purple from Dharma Trading Company right at the very end or what's going to be the center of the mandala. In the sections formed by the hemostats on one side of the mandala, 
I'm going to use purple colors and I'm going to use blue colors on the other side. So I'm starting in the middle section with Aster from Pro Chemical and Dye. And when I put blues on one side and purples on the other, when the mandala is opened up, they're going to alternate. So you'll see a blue section and a purple section and so on. Then in the top section, I'm going to use Snozberry from Dharma. And in the bottom section, I'm going to use English Violet from Dye Spin. If you're wondering, Snozberry was a special spring 2022 color from Dharma. I think it was a muck color and it's no longer available. On the other side, I'm starting at the top with Ice Blue from Dharma, followed by Blue Pervinka from Dye Spin in the bottom section and Ice Dye Blue from Dye Spin in the middle section. So the goal for this shirt is for the mandala portion to be like normal, for it just to be a beautiful ice dyed mandala. Then outside of the mandala portion, I'm going to place some dye and hopefully it will move down the shirt and gravity dye the rest of the shirt. At least that's the goal. I'm doing another shirt on the other end and I've actually already posted that one. That one was for an Alzheimer's challenge that I did with Michelle from Michelle Sews, who you can also find on YouTube. That one turned out really cool. I'll put a link to that video down below in the description for this one. To kind of set the mandala portion apart, I'm going to place a small line of Imperial Purple from Dharma right outside this last set of hemostats. A lot of times whenever you add a dark line, on the outside of your last set of hemostats, it will kind of make the mandala pop off of the shirt, almost like it's 3D. Kind of adds a shadow back behind it, which I think is a cool effect. For the rest of the shirt, I'm gonna place the dye in stripes. And I'm starting by placing Snozberry from Dharma right down the middle. Whoops, sorry about that shake, I bumped my camera. Now I'm using Ice Blue from Dharma on one side of the Snozberry, and I'm going to use Blue Pervinka from Dye Spin on the other side. Now I'm going to add a pretty good layer of dry soda ash over the top of the dye. I'm going to add quite a bit of ice to this shirt so that I can force the dye down to the edges of the shirt. And I want to make sure that I still have plenty of soda ash remaining in the shirt to react with the dye. Now I'm going to layer on the ice and I'm using some square two inch ice cubes which I made from some silicone molds which I purchased off of Amazon. I'm also using just some smaller ice cubes, which I made from some sort of a silicone mold, which I found up in my cabinet. The two inch ice cubes are a lot better in my climate because it is still in the nineties here and the ice melts really quickly. The two inch ice cubes last a little bit longer and melt a little bit slower. I came back and added a couple more ice cubes in various places. I went ahead and put the shirt inside of a plastic container that has a rack in the bottom. After all of the ice melted, I want to make sure that I keep the shirt damp and I don't allow it to dry out before it's had plenty of time to process. I allowed the shirt to process for about 24 hours after all the ice melted. Maybe a little less time because it was really hot outside. Then I took the shirt to my utility sink and I started rinsing it in cold water like normal. I rinse in cold water to rinse out any of the soda ash. It's important to rinse out the soda ash and then that way once your soda ash is out of your shirt, the likelihood of any of the excess dye that comes out of the shirt staining or going in onto an area that you don't want it to is greatly reduced. I mean, there's no guarantees that you won't have any color move to another area, but 
the likelihood of that is a whole lot less once your soda ash is out. Mainly because the dye needs soda ash to properly bond with the fabric. So if you eliminate that from the shirt, any of the dye that could still potentially be capable of bonding is probably not going to bond with the shirt. After rinsing in cold for a while, I took the hemostats off of the shirt and warmed the water up to hot to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. At this point, the dye that you see coming out of the shirt is just excess dye. The dye that is actually bonded with the shirt is permanent and it will stay there. It's not going to rinse out. But the hot water is really good to rinse out the excess dye that's in the shirt so that it doesn't continue to go into your washing machine every time you wash the shirt. By the way, most laundry detergents contain sodium carbonate, which is soda ash. So that's the reason why, say, if I didn't rinse this shirt very well and I threw it into the washing machine in, say, a hot water cycle with a white t-shirt and washed it using just some regular laundry detergent, I could have staining on that white shirt from this tie-dye shirt. I'm adding the elements that you would need to dye something. I'm adding heat, soda ash, and some dye. So I try to rinse them as well as I can. There's also a product out now called Carbona Color Catchers. And they're sheets that you can throw in your washing machine when you wash tie-dye or other newer items or darker clothing items. And it helps to keep any of that excess dye from depositing onto your clothing. I think Shout also makes a product like that. They're really good if you're not entirely sure that an item is rinsed really well, or they've saved a lot of things that I've washed before just from clothing items that I purchased at the store. When the shirt was rinsing almost clear, I put it in the washing machine along with some Dharma's textile detergent and washed it using a hot water cycle. So now it's been washed and dried, and here's what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one turned out really pretty. I photographed it both flat and on a mannequin because sometimes I think you can see the design a little better when it's laying flat. But I want you to see what it would look like if you were actually wearing it too. So I love the mandala portion. I think it's beautiful. And do you see what I mean about whenever you alternate those colors where you put say purple on one side and blue on the other, it makes the colors alternate on the actual mandala. I can also see a little bit of the effect of putting the imperial purple right on the outside of the mandala, except because I did a mandala slash gravity dye, that imperial purple ran or was part of the gravity dye effect, and it's not a real defined line on the very outside of the mandala. But I don't mind that, I think it still looks pretty. And it does give that darker effect right up close to the mandala. As far as the gravity dye goes, I think that effect worked really well on the shirt too. I think the gravity worked great on the front portion of the shirt and the back side has a totally different look to it, which I think is really cool. It just kind of swirls almost into the middle or the backbone part of the shirt. There is one strange purple blob down toward the middle of the bottom of the shirt which is kind of odd but the rest of it I think looks really cool very watercolor like I like that cool dye movement and the fact that it just kind of swirls down toward the backbone is really cool the other shirt that I did this with too it did the same thing and I like that effect on that one as well there is some white left and I already knew that that was going to be the case because, I mean, I could see it hanging there. But I wanted to leave some like this. I didn't want to just continue to add dye and ice and see if I could get it saturated. I thought I would go ahead and leave it and see how it looked on the shirt. And I'm pretty happy with it. So overall, I really like this shirt. I think it turned out beautiful. And I think that this technique works really well to combine both the mandala portion of the shirt with the orderly and the every line nice and straight and perfect and then the randomness of the gravity dye. I just think that's a really cool effect to pair with that more defined mandala look. But what do you guys think? Drop me some comments down below and let me know. 
And if you've enjoyed watching me make this shirt, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.